I posted the little outline of what we're going to try and cover today. So first on the list would be reversals and turtle soup because I know a lot of people have been asking about how do you predict a turtle soup and what do you actually use to trade it. So we'll cover that um, and how to kind of confirm we're in a reversal stage um, and what to look for. And then we'll look at the 10 a.m. retracement versus reversal. So if um, if you're in the Patreon and you downloaded the V5 of the 950 stage and day, this will be another kind of stream to help cover that. And then the last thing I'll look at is um, retracement legs, targeting order blocks over for value gaps. Any other questions you guys have? And then we can look at some old live streams. Um, I'll kind of review the morning sessions in there just quickly. So first I just wanted to say um, we're going to talk about reversals, right? So how do you trade a turtle soup? Well, the first thing I'll look at obviously is time. So if we're looking at a potential reversal at 10 a.m. or you know 9.30, all those different things, that's the most important thing. Second would be drawing liquidity. So if you get those two things out of the way and you already can anticipate reversal, the first thing you want to look for is um, is basically your last up closing or down closing range before the like the last stage of reversal. So here I'll try and cover it here. Um, let me delete some of this stuff. You're gonna be looking at your last. So in this case, if we're reversing down, you're gonna be looking at your last um, up closing candle in the range before the reversal starts, okay? You'll be looking how price wants to respect that. So obviously we came up, swept out by some liquidity from um, the previous couple days. That's what this black line is. Now we're anticipating a reversal right at 1030 because we've had this extended range from 930, no due to swing. So the framework is there. Now, as soon as we see this turtle soup, so we sweep out the short-term buy side, we're gonna be looking for um, the change in state of delivery, okay? So that's your first indication that we want to, um, you know, we want to flip into a reversal stage. So this down closing range here, right? This is a consecutive, let me remove this too. This down closing range should be a consecutive order block and should support price as we, as we climb up, right? So we close above it here. You're expecting this candle, if I drag it like this, you're expecting this next candle, if we want to bounce into it like this one did, we're gonna see higher prices maybe into this hourly gap, right? You see the next candle come and it pierces all the way through down to the discount end. So that's your first indication, okay? First indication we may be in the CISD. Now, your second indication is, are we going to now respect um, bearish order blocks or bearish fair value gaps? So this kind of dip lower, we're filling a tiny portion in this gap, so it's kind of hard to tell now. But then we're going to be watching. So what's your last up closing candle before this down move, right? That's your it's your technically your highest candle here. So if you were to take an order block, CSD just stands for change in the state of delivery. So if we're flipping from a bullish, see how we're a bullish state of delivery here. We're respecting previous down closing candles, right? We have order blocks, things like that. We're respecting bullish gaps. We have an order block down here. We're holding, right? We didn't even approach it. You have a gap, filling the gap, staying above it, okay? Now we close all the way through this bullish order block. And then you're going to be looking, okay, where is now the bearish order block? Technically, now this is kind of a difficult concept to understand in the beginning, but if you're more advanced in ICT concepts or you just want to apply turtle soups into your model, this is what I use just to kind of look for a stage of reversal before a market structure shift. Because I think sometimes market structure shifts can be a little misleading. <clears throat> so if you feel like market structure shifts are a little too late, this is what I use. So this last up closing candle here. So we disrespect the, the bullish order block. We trade up into every valley gap right there. And now we're wicking into this last up closing candle, right? And then we start displacing away. That would be your CISD. Okay. Change the state of delivery. Now this works almost every single time you see a reversal. Um, now obviously you can't just be looking at this framework every single time because it's not going to work if you don't have the, you know, the element of time and why we would, the, the context of why we would reverse. Um, like here, here's another example, right? 
We have this down move. We're displacing into 50% of the dealing range from 927 high up to here. Right, here's your discount. Tapping into discount there. Now we're wondering, um, are we going to reverse or potentially short-term retrace? This last candle, I already marked it out here, but as soon as we close above it, we have a gap here. But see how we're stuck between two PDRAs. But see how once we close above this order block line, right in here, close above it right here, we tap into it again, tap into it again, and we close above, and we start seeing more bullish price action. So this last kind of candle you can use before the move, this last candle before the move, you can use as your CISD. You can basically find this almost anywhere. I'll try and find another one. Like here, right? We have, instead instead of one candle, we have two candles. We're expecting a reversal potentially out of this gap. We tap into it and start trading above. Now we're watching a CISD, okay? So the first indication would be, okay, we have a um, bearish order block in here. Technically a bearish order block in here too, but I'm watching this one because it's a little bit higher probability since it's two candles and it's larger candle bodies. We start closing above this, close above this. Now we wick down into these last two down closing candles, right? So that's what you can use for your turtle soup. Now you can just go back to this yourself and see how many times it works. But a lot of times this is what you're going to be using. I can go and find other examples too. Like here we have same thing, last up closing range. We displaced through a previous order block. We're going to go and retest that previous range in here. And you can see the candle bodies holding right at that line. Another example of a CISD. So that's how you can use turtle soups. I think that's what I used on, what was it, Wednesday when we traded the turtle soup. If you saw that video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, this is Thursday. Right in here. So if I put the execution labels on after, you'll see. But failed Judas at 930. We got displacement lower. No turtle soup. Or sorry, no Judas at 945. So we're expecting, since we got consolidation between 945 and 10, you want to see that Judas swing happen. Right at 10, we displace lower. Right? Knocking out the external range sell side liquidity. Now I'm watching for a change in the state of delivery, okay? I want to make sure that we're going to start flipping bullish. So I'm watching, okay, we have this down closing range here, this up closing range. We start closing below this candle and then we close all the way through. So that's my first indication because we now validated this order block here. See how this kind of, if it flips, we can look at, um, kind of look at these order blocks as they form right at the bottom. So I'm now going to watch to see how we want to respect this down closing candle to see if we want bullish movement. Tap into it once, tap into it again and start trading up. So that to me is our CISD and then I think I actually entered, yep, right here. So we wicked into it and started trading back up. So that's where I entered and then we exited off the internal range liquidity right up here. Now, the reason that this works is you need framework. I'm going to keep drilling that until it makes sense because you can't just use this every single time you see um, you see it happen, right? Like, without time, it's not so... Right here, here's an example where outside of time, it doesn't work. We don't get this large expansion out. I mean, I've seen it sweeps out internal range liquidity, but it's not really a model you'd want to use, right? We have this last non-closing candle. We trade up through it. We tap into it multiple times, right? And then we shoot up. I mean, obviously you can keep using this over and over, but you have to pair it with narrative and time. So that's how I look at turtle soups and how I time reversals. That's kind of the first indication, right? Because if you were looking here and you're like, okay, I'm going to wait all the way till we see a breaker or a market structure shift. The only swing high you really can see is all the way up here. Right? This is really the only swing high you'd be using for a market structure shift. right? Or a breaker, you have this low, high, lower, low that swept out external range liquidity. That would be your breaker in here, right? These up-closing candles. This would be your breaker. 
So your entry would maybe be off this fair value gap in the breaker. Right? Which obviously there's nothing wrong with this entry. But as we approach um, the end of this macro time, I don't really want to be entering too late after. Um, so if you were to take this entry, you know, you still get the 20 points. But it's almost double from where the CISD happens to where a market structure shift in a you know a, a kind of standard entry happens up here. We'll take these off now. Um, so I guess we'll cover what we're expecting now at 10 a.m. It's a good kind of segue in. So if you're looking at your 950 macros, um, if you have that V5, you can pull that up now too. Um, I categorized basically two. Here, let me actually pull this up so you guys can see. Let me stop this stream and then I'll restream my screen. Hopefully, you can see that. Should be able to. So, if we're looking at this, we have two different categories, okay? We have a retracement at 10 a.m. Now you can enter before or after. I'm not going to cover like each one, but you either have a retracement at 10 a.m. or a reversal at 10 a.m. That's really the only two kind of things you can get at 10 a.m., okay? The only two stages of delivery. An exclusion to these would be low probability days, 10 a.m. news, and Mondays. So, but despite you know this stuff this typically works um, then you can further classify it into these you know different um, how, how to like kind of predict it a little bit better but these two are really the only thing that you really need retracement or reversal um, then you can use the Judas swing between 930 and 10 to further increase your probabilities right we have 940 super liquidity you get your macro and low risk buy entry um, but that's really kind of the basics. So if you wanted to just study the 950 macro, um, excluding these days, I'm not saying that they're impossible to trade, but they don't really follow the typical framework you see um, in these two. So we can go through some of the examples now. Um, so here, right, we have failed Judas. We're reversing at 10 a.m. Um, we can go back to maybe what, like Tuesday? Here we have a slight retracement at 10 a.m. Okay, so it still falls within this category. We have a busy here, right at 10 retracing. But this is why we have we have news here on Tuesday. So that's why it's kind of difficult to see, right? Um, it's not as clear as some of the other days. You know what we can do? We can actually go back and watch some of the previous live streams. Let me actually do that. We can just go and watch all the old, old like a couple of old old streams. I can't talk. <laughs> old streams and then review just what happens at 10 a.m. And you can see that this stuff kind of works. Hey, yo. So you can access all the live stream recordings. If you go to the channel, go to playlists, and then live stream recordings are there. Yeah, stream recording will be posted. Um, I'm assuming probably by 2 p.m., depending on how long the HD rendering takes. Um, okay, you should be able to see this, I hope. Everyone see it? So we'll just look at each of these days, really, and kind of predict what's going to happen. So this is the first stream, I think. Oops, well, it already starts off. But here you have a... Sweep of liquidity at 940. So if you have that document pulled up, at 940 we're expecting a low risk entry, meaning a 2022 model you have a low risk buy or low risk sell. So as soon as you see your first rate value gap, typically you're going to enter that during your macro. So we have a 940 sweep, low risk entry. Um, you're expecting a retracement at 10 a.m. So we displace lower, 950 starts, we can fill a two minute gap in here, retracement at 10 a.m., and you're expecting external range liquidity down here. So if you play this out, 
keeps going. And then we eventually rent out the sell side liquidity. Okay, so that would be your retracement at 10 a.m. Um, obviously using kind of previous data to frame the trade. Then we can go to the ninth. Let's get back their highs. So once IQ sweeps out, here's another example where we have um, a 10 a.m. retracement. We don't have a 9th of Judas. So, and if you look here in the 15 minute chart, so here's your 10 a.m. retracement into a free value gap, and then we displace away. This is definitely a difficult one to use, but um, if you've seen the other videos, you know between 9.30 and 10.30, if we have an extended range, um, what are we expecting to see? Let's see if anyone knows. If we have an extended range between 9.30 and 10.30, what are you expecting to see at 10.30? Yep, consolidation in turtle soup. So if we play this out, Let's go to 10.30. It's audition. See the turtle soup happen right there. Uh, let's see what happens. I don't know, man. So an example, and we're within macro time, 10.30, 10.45. You could use this order block here as your entry. <clears throat> That's just off the top of my head as I'm seeing. And then we're trading back. Was that 14.680? You're looking for 14.660. could use this as another entry, 14.40. So at least 40, 50 points right off that. So extended range, consolidation, turtle soup. Looking for a change in state of delivery. We see that first um, change in state as we close below this previous down closing candle, right? And then we start trading up into the previous range. And then we tap the order block. You could use that as your entry point. All within the macro time, right? So we're outside of time. We're not looking for anything. We're just gathering data. We see the turtle soup happen and then reversal. And this happens over and over and over again. We can look at actually, August is a difficult month to trade. So we'll look at the September examples. That's potential. So in here, what do we see? Here, okay, so this is an example where it's 10 a.m. news. Okay, so we're not gonna be really looking at to trade this um, because we have 10 a.m. news. Obviously, if you're more familiar with 10 a.m. news, then you can look to trade it. I would say trade anything from the three to five minute would be fine, but it's best to avoid these kind of news drivers. So if we have a 10 a.m. news point, it's not the end of the world, we'll be looking at 10.30. So to me, this already looks like uh, we have an extended range down here, um, and we have a 9.30 Judah swing, failed Judah swing, but we're trading up into a current dealing range premium, knocking out previous buys of liquidity, so I would expect to see a market maker cell model form in the process. So if we skip forward up to 1030 ish, you can see I actually, so <laughs> looking back at it, we're expecting that market maker cell model now, but obviously I didn't really have that framework back in September. Um, so I actually entered long off this gap, not knowing what was to come. And then you can see we got stopped out and we trade back lower all within time. We have a gap here, trade up into it right at 1030 trade away that's already 40 points right off that and then we probably reach down for the sell side i assume right there enter another short targeting the sell side got the 20 points and then there you go sell side let's go to the sixth anything less than if you don't have a judas swing on the consolidation is an smt enough for you to trust over so yeah um, it can be a slight turtle soup. Um, that's perfectly fine if we have also clear SMT between ES and NQ. ES is really the only one I would use um, for SMT at 1030. I would not use YM. So if you get that, then it's it's clear enough, especially if you're already expecting a reversal to happen, like if we have the extended range or if we're reaching to some PD array at 1030, then that's most likely what's going to happen. So September 6th, we also have news here. So we look at 10.30. Here's an example where we have a failed Judas at 9.30. We're already seeing kind of an extended range starting to form with no real retracement. So this is basically what are you expecting to see. Here's an example where I'm entering kind of early, kind of late, I mean, got the 20 points. Um, 
extended range between 930 and 1030, you're expecting a reversal at 1030. So turtle soup at the bottom, which we may have gotten there. All right, watch the turtle soup and then long, probably up to at least this buy set up here. Um, what is that? 15, 432. There's your turtle soup. We have an inversion gap in here, right? So inversion gap, we're trading through it. And what are we tapping into in this range, right? We have this previous down closing candle, your CISD. We're not even getting down to the body. We're just wicking into the wick right in here. Draw that out. CISD, you could be entering anywhere in here, expecting that framework, right? Enter long, and that's off what, like, we'll say 15... 400, we get 15, 420, and I'm expecting that as your short term terminus. We got 15, 420 as your 20 points, and we don't really see what happens after that. The seventh, yes, we left. Let's see. Um, but right now, um, so we have a you have SMT at the bottom, so uh, you don't really want to consider that as a Judas swing at 9.30. We trade up, filling into premium of the 15-minute gap. So that would be, I guess you can consider that as your 9.40 super liquidity. So be watching for um, a potential 9.50 low-risk sell. Okay, so we see this um, reversal happen at 9.40. We're looking for change in state. We get the change in state. Um, bouncing off this order block, but you would expect... Um, 950 low risk sell and if we're seeing a line 950 low risk sell typically you're not going to see a reversal at 10 a.m. you'll see a retracement at 10 a.m. so you can use that um, retracement at 10 a.m. to either pyramid or you can just enter again if you were late on the 950 um, low risk entry so let's look start turning back lower you see this gap in here you could also use the order block I would use the order block actually fell into the gap there's your lower risk sell, right? 2022 model, you can kind of see it. And we're looking at 10 a.m. here. We're probably going to get a buy side sweep of this high since we're expecting a retracement at 10 a.m., a buy side sweep. And then we'll dump off again into the sell side or at least the 20 points. There's your buy side sweep. Magic, isn't it? And then we shouldn't, I mean, this low was guaranteed. I'll be looking for that sell side. Got the low. Got the sell side on ES. Wow, we failed it. We got close. But you can see it's still 20 points. Still actually 40 points almost from the entry there at 10 a.m. If you look at the 8th. Weaker in two weeks. I, which looks like we're closing. This would be a so. definitely a hard one. Now you can see we're tracing at 10 a.m. See how we started this kind of move here? Like this to me, I would look for shorts because we got this 950 sweep out and we started trading back lower aggressively. So I would actually be looking to enter short in here. Um, but this is also why your draw on liquidity is very important. You can't just use the frameworks that I've I've given and not understand draw on liquidity. Okay, because if you're looking for higher prices, like in this case, if you look at the hourly, we have buy side up here, right? We have buy side, we have a gap. Um, we've already... Smart money reverse at the bottom or expecting the bullish order block. Okay, so we have a bullish bias. You can't be expecting that we're just going to reverse here, take out liquidity all the way down here again, if we have a bias on the higher time frames that we want higher prices. So this dip lower, you could be expecting, you know, either retracement or reversal at 10. This would be your deep retracement. Um, definitely a hard one to spot, but it still technically follows the rules, right? We're tracing into 10 a.m. We have no news here. Um, I'm sure we probably, yeah, we displace away. <clears throat> but if you got stopped out there, I'm sure 1030, since we have a failed Judas here, retracement at 10 a.m., you're looking for 1030, turtle soup, and reverse. Here's your turtle soup consolidation. Starting to see some reversal in here. Displace away, you can use the gap as a short opportunity. Short option right there. If you want to put your limit in, then should dump off. There you go. 
Go to the next one. All side. Then we do also have black. And then if we want to continue. So this is a Monday. Okay. So this is one of your exceptions to the rules. This is a low probability day. Now, Mondays, you can most likely wait for 1030. Or if you're really kind of strong with your bias, then you can enter off of. I would wait for the first 10 minutes. I would wait for 10 a.m. to kind of show you what it wants to do. So in this case, we start trading away. We don't have a clear entry point between 9.50 and 10. Trade up into the gap. Now, to me, that looks like a premature retracement. We're expecting that at 10 a.m. So we either would consolidate. On a normal day, this is fine. We would probably see a consolidation, sweep of the buy side, and then we trade back lower. <clears throat> right? But since it's a Monday, you kind of see this effect where I don't really know if this is the correct definition of time distortion, but this is what my understanding of it is. Time distortion is where we get prolonged consolidation where the algorithm will wait for time to do its chores, right? So if there's a specific time where price needs to um, get to at that time, then we'll kind of chop around, do kind of search and destroy conditions, and then we'll displace there. You can also see this on Mondays where the expected delivery times are a little messed up in the morning. So like this, you would expect to see a 10. And if you skip forward, we see this dump off, which is two minutes before you would like to see that retracement, right? Let's see what happens at 10 a.m. here. Another retracement opportunity, I guess. But we're tracing deep into the gap. Still feeling to sweep up the sell side. See how kind of choppy it is here on Monday? Another gap fill there. Retracement at... But this would you expect to see at 10 a.m. too. Like we're... This lineup is very... Where it gets very wonky, right? It's hard to tell what we want to do. So that's why Mondays you either want to avoid or just wait for... Um, later data. I think Monday is the one where PM session may be better than AM session. Just for the sole purpose we're coming off of, you know, the weekend and things like that. But if you look at the 13th, this, time, so this is a CPI stream. Concerning so, attack back low probability conditions. But to me, this already looks like we're up to liquidity at 940, so low risk sell opportunity, I assume, at 10. So you look for a retracement at 10 AM. Is your retracement into the gap. Stop would be above, but see how see how in this picture here I'm I have it wrong. We don't have the framework. To me, I'm, it looks like we're just retracing to this gap at 950, and we're expecting longs. But since we already got the sweep out at 940, we want to see a lower risk sell. So using this gap as the entry, stop would be above this high, right? So if you draw this high out, entering here, targeting this new week opening gap low or the sell side, and if we skip forward. Got close to the stop there, but you know it's post CPI, so we can expect low probability conditions. And we displace down and knock out the sell side. Okay, so you can see it follows the general framework. It's just rougher on on these kind of days, right? So you know it, it works basically every single day, especially if you study enough. Like if you go to a random day, like the second, twenty second. Here you have another example where we reverse at 940, right? We sweep, sweep out London low here at 940 and we respond off it quickly. Now you can see again, we have the turtle sweep entry really, really early before the market structure shift happens. We have this last down closing candle. We come up trade all the way through it, confirms this as a potential order block. We tap it once, tap it again, and then we fly off of it. So that's your change in save delivery, right? Now I'm entering here off the basis that we swept out liquidity at 940, low risk buy, right? At 950, you're looking for low risk buy and a retracement at 10 a.m. So I entered here, probably took the 20 or something. Let's look. Expands up, got the 20. Here's 10 a.m. We're looking for another retracement and we probably will reach that buy side right after. Retracement at 10 a.m., buy side. Like you, you can't make this stuff up. This is it literally works almost every day. And then we trace off that. Okay. If you look at the twenty fifth the next day. Three PD rates go back. Right. Well, we are on a Monday, so that's the first thing I'd be looking for. 
Um, we have a failed Judas swing at 9.30. So SMT, you were looking for a potential reversal at um, at 10 a.m. Okay, so this is also in the PDF. So if you haven't downloaded it, go ahead and do that. But 9.30 failed Judas. We have SMT as well at the low. So you'd be looking at this as a potential target. It depends on what we do for the next couple of minutes. If we consolidate between 9.45 and 10, most times you see a Judas swing at 10 and then reverse. That's what that turtle soup trade was a couple days ago. But see how we're failed Judas here? And we're starting to consolidate now. And we swept out some bias and liquidity from, it looks like, Friday. So we have all that data in our heads, right? We have failed Judas. We have consolidation at 945. And we have, it's a Monday, so we're not expecting any super clean price action. Um, and we just swept out bias and liquidity. All those things together point to the fact that we should, it's not a guarantee, but we should reverse at 10 a.m. after we see a Judas swing. So we want to see a Judas swing up, knocking out the AM high short term, and then we trade back at least down to this order block or 50% of the dealing range. So we skip forward. So you, you would not be entering the first 10 minutes, right? You'd be waiting for 10 a.m. to enter. We see it pop right by a tick. We see that sweep of liquidity right at 9.54. Let's see what happens now. Here comes 10 a.m. Or here's your proper Judas, actually. There's your proper Judas swing, right? We look for change in state. See how this last up closing candle here? That's your turtle suit or your Judas swing up. We close below it and then we wick up into it, respecting mean threshold. Okay, that's another thing you can use. Mean threshold, this larger order block. Draw that out, tapping up into it and we just place lower. So that's your first indication. We're going to reverse at 10 a.m. So I would actually, if you were really aggressive, you could be entering right there. And I'd be looking for maybe this tiny gap right in here, or you could wait for a opportunity to use like an inversion gap, something like that. Like this was your breaker, so you could enter technically that candle too, if you just wanted to wait. Let's see what happens. Tiny fair value up there, you could use as an entry, and then we displace into the tiny gap I mentioned, right? Probably a little further too. Yeah, a little further. And then we start bouncing off of that. Okay. So study this. It really does work, especially if you understand the concepts. Um, and I'm sure you can find great benefit out of it, especially if you try and apply it real time and tape read it real time. Um, it happens a lot more times than it doesn't. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to get it wrong or you're going to... Um, predict it every single day you're not going to predict it every single day especially if you don't understand the low probability days right and i still sometimes will mess up on what happens in the first 10 minutes um sometimes what happens with the news those are difficult days to trade um but that's why stop losses and managing risk is important because if you get this one wrong yeah you can look at the 10 30 10 45 but if you get this one wrong and you don't have discipline to wait for that time a lot of times you're going to be trying to go back and forth within this macro, trying to get the macro move, or trying to trade in between this time frame. And you can see it's not really the cleanest price action, right? Um, then you wait here, we finally get a reversal, but obviously this is on Tuesday, so you get what I'm trying to say. Um, what was the last thing? Our oh, tracement legs targeting order blocks over fair value gaps. Okay, so another question that was asked sometime this week, how far are we expected to retrace and when are we expected to retrace? So I think I've said this previously, but if we're in a market maker model and we see, <clears throat> I'll do a cell model here. Something like this, okay. From a market maker cell model, and we're looking at, um, you know, shorting opportunities. Every fear value gap that isn't efficiently delivered, and every swing low you see within discount. So if we take this, everything within discount, you're going to be looking for retracements off of here. Okay. The only reason you wouldn't see a retracement is if we have PD rays that are very efficiently delivered, right? So if we have like gaps in here that are worked with both buying and selling. Down here, we have another more buying and selling. You know, it's very efficient delivery. Then sometimes you'll just see speed all the way through. Okay. 
Um, otherwise, you'll see these kind of retracements where after we knock out a short-term low like this, we retrace into a child dealing range over here into premium. Say we have another gap right in here or something that's within premium, or sorry, within discount. You see this retrace up into 50% of this, right? So that's all your retracement legs. Now, once you understand this, um, I think I have a whole separate video on this. I'll try and find it and send it later. But once you understand this, you can then apply um, the concept of how far we expect it to retrace, right? If we have multiple fair value gaps in this leg here, so say we knock, we turn into this gap here within discount, and we start retracing, and we have this leg here. How far are we going to retrace? So if we have like 13 gaps over here, or just one large gap, something like that. Say we have a ton of gaps over here. Do we just IO fed into the short one like this and then trade lower? Or do we go all the way up to here? What do we do? Typically, you're going to be looking for premium in this case. So if you draw the fib, you're going to be looking for um, anything within premium. So if that's your favorite value gap, anything below that, I would not be looking. Um, but if we have multiple fair value gaps above, you're going to be looking for an order block. Okay, so the order block could either come from this leg in here, either an up closing range, or it could just be a tiny up closing range and then we displace lower. So some sort of order block in that range for price to return to and respect. So it prioritizes order blocks over fair value gaps most times. Like in here, I'm trying to find a good example now that we can use. Let me delete this stuff. Here's an example. Looking for potential lower prices. Um, how far do we retrace? So we have this consolidation zone. We displace lower multiple of your value gaps. Your order block range would be either here or here. But if we take this entire range up into the order block, make sure you back lower. It's not really a good example, but you kind of understand what I'm saying, right? We're not going dis to disregard these for value gaps down here. Deep retracement into an order block. Um, this is an example of efficient price delivery. What I mentioned earlier, where you get speed. So where do you see? We're not going to we're not going to retrace or reverse. We're going to see just quick um, downside candles. This is an example where we have pretty efficient delivery here, right? So if we look between this low and this high, where are all the gaps? So we have a gap here. We have another gap um, right here. We have another gap right here. Don't think I'm missing anything. We have a tiny one right here, technically. Um, that's all I'm really seeing. Right, we have another gap up here. But look, all of the gaps on this higher end are efficiently delivered. So what is efficient delivery of a gap? You want to see both buying and selling. Now that can be candle bodies or that can be numerous keyword numerous wicks within the within the gap so here we have wick lower clear selling clear buying so that's basically efficiently delivered in there it is slightly inefficient because we do have a, a tiny portion where it's only one wick um and here we have clear selling and clear buying right see how this these candle buys come all the way through here we have some buying and selling but it's not there's a tiny portion that's left open um, and then these down here are completely left open. Okay, so now watch how price wants to react to all of these. Okay, so in here, after we see the reversal, so disregarding, you know, the fact that we're reversing, this tiny portion in here, what do we see? We see clear buying, right? We see this down closing candle to wicked back up, so that's buying, selling. Another example of buying to fill it, to efficiently deliver. Then what do we do? We leave. Now, we don't have to fill this gap again because we already efficiently delivered it, right? So this gap won't really create any, any speed bumps in price. What do we see? Speed all the way through. We have no gaps in here that are inefficiently delivered. So we see speed all the way until the next inefficiency. 
See how we just displaced quickly? Now this is 1113. It's not like we have a news driver here. This is just random. It would look like on, on retail charts. This is just a random, a lot of sellers are coming in. No, it's just, there's no inefficiencies. No inefficiency here. We displace. Now what do we do? We have, now I told you earlier, this was mostly efficiently delivered. We have this kind of wick back and forth. So we probably will see another retracement. Move back into it. Close all the way through. And then we wick all the way back up to kind of fill that portion that wasn't efficiently delivered. Now what do we see again? We see no inefficient delivery in this range, right? From this SIBI low, sorry, the BISI low, right here, all the way down to right around there. There's no gaps. So what do we see? Speed. All the way through, right? No retracement. This gap and this gap. See how we just dumped all the way through them? And then we took out the sell side down here. Typically, what, what would you want to see, right, with these gaps? You would want to see something what we saw up here, right, where we have efficient delivery back and forth. We don't get that. So after we took out that sell side, you would want to see um, these gaps now efficiently delivered. So this has clear selling. You would want to see clear buying. We drag this out. You can see price consolidating to fill those gaps, right? Here's another example. We have efficient delivery between this low and this high. Do we see any gaps that are left unfilled? No, we have this gap in here. If I remove this one. This gap in here, efficiently delivered with both buying and selling, right? No gaps between this low and this low. So uh, once we want to reverse, we sweep out the short-term buy side liquidity. That's your Judas swing. Tapping into the rest of this gap that was left unfilled, right? And then we see speed all the way through the efficient delivered price into the sell side and obviously probably some yeah there's probably a, there's an order block in here but price goes from inefficient delivery to efficient delivery and it goes back and forth um, and you can use that to to gauge where price is expected to accelerate quickly or it's when to slow down um, and that's very helpful for your you're using your your models right let's look at the questions I don't want to neglect these. Um, do you still expect a retracement at 10 a.m. even if we already are within the expansion leg from 940 to 945 reversal, for example? Um, yeah, so if we get, are, are you talking about the low risk entries? If you're talking about the low risk entries, then um, say we have, okay, yeah. So yeah, most times, unless the liquidity target is met, you'll still see another entry at 10 a.m. So if we have 9.40, we, oops, 9.40, we sweep out liquidity or something, then we start trading back lower, and then say this is right at 9.50, right there. We have a gap up here. A lot of times what you'll see is we do trade up into the gap at 9.50, or say it's 9.55-ish, and we may kind of leave it or consolidate, and then 10 o'clock will come, and we sweep out the short-term high or the short-term low that's formed, and then we displace away again. Or you could see this. Get a retracement at the start of the macro, we displace again, and then in that displacement like we need to form another fair value gap. Can't speak. Another fair value gap there. We retrace at 10 a.m. and then dump off into the sell side. So you can use that as a pyramid entry. Right? If we get the first entry that's clean, you can use that as a pyramid. Or um sometimes the only time I would say that you wouldn't see a retracement at 10 um after we see the 940 reversal. Obviously, excluding low probability days, so excluding Mondays, excluding news, is if this first leg comes down and already takes out the liquidity. Um, so if this first leg before 10 a.m. takes a liquidity like this, then I would be very careful to enter at 10 a.m. Because you could see, you know, we retrace and then see another leg. But I think this is where higher time frame context would come in, right? Because if you see, like, something like London low, like a very heavy pool of liquidity, down here and we sweep that at 10 a.m., then I'd be like, okay, there's really a high possibility that we reverse here at 10 a.m., especially if we have a, a narrative where like there's a daily SIBI or something above where we're expecting higher prices. We see this 940 sweep of buy side, trade back lower, taking out the London low. Then I'm like, all right, if we if we reverse here, it wouldn't be surprising. Um, I would probably say it's just best to avoid these and just wait for 10.30. So, Context and narrative are important, but most times you will see, uh, if we reverse a 940, 
another entry given at 10. There's obviously exclusions to the model, but that's my general understanding of it. All the back testing insight have to go. Yeah, so if you guys um, missed some of it or you just came in late, this will all be recorded and posted on YouTube for everyone. So um, I'll send the link out in probably a couple hours once it's done rendering. Um, so that's all I wanted to cover. Um, so if you have any questions or anything about a, a model or psychology or tape reading, anything like that, you can put them in the chat right now. Um, we can go over those. Otherwise, if there's not a ton of questions flowing in, then we'll wrap it up here. I don't want to take too much of your time here on Sunday, Saturday morning. Did you get all the classifications from tape reading? Uh, yeah, for the most part. I won't say this is my work, because this is all ICD concepts. Um, but all the classifications, all the kind of tape reading tools I just gave you about low risk entries and things like that, that's all just from back testing. Just looking at the charts, seeing what's happening, reviewing old live streams, things like that, and just kind of figuring out what we are expecting to see. Where can I find the PDF you mentioned? Um, let me, here, I'll share it to you guys. I shared it with the Patreon group. I'll share it here. Um, so this is the most recent one. I'm working on a second PDF for it. But if you want to download this, there it is. If you share it with other discords, um, just give me an ICT credit. Otherwise, um, you're free to do whatever you want with it. Yeah, no problem. I have a question about SMT and when to anticipate it. For example, I was trading London on the 7th and expecting slightly lower objectives on NQ before delivery to the upside. Um, so SMT is kind of the... It's, it's definitely difficult to teach because it's more of like... It's one of those things where you have to just like feel it happen. I, I don't really know what to what to say. You have to have it happen multiple times for you to understand when it's going to when it's going to occur. Obviously, you're going to be anticipating it when you want to see reversals. So for me, I would be looking at SMT between around ten o'clock, around ten thirty, where I want to see price reverse at those times. So if we get ten thirty, we're expanding up. And we were anticipating 10:30 reversal. Excuse me. Um, and we have ES running out their higher high and NQ failing to. Then, that's when I would be looking for SMT. Something like the 9:30, um, the 9:30 swing. If we have this also liquidity ran out at 9:30 and ES and NQ is failing to, like we are here. That would be substantial SMT. Okay. Um, now this works on any time frame. SMT works on any time frame, so you can anticipate. Um, most times it does happen within kill zones, right? So you're not going to be looking at SMT outside of kill zones. Um, if we have substantial liquidity on higher time frames, so say we have something like a 15 minute swing high, um, and you see ES. I think the best way you can anticipate SMT is if it's counter bias. So say we have a bullish bias. We already have some sort of higher time frame bullish bias. We have, um, you know, liquidity objectives up there, whatever it may be. And then we have, you're going to be anticipating some sort of SMT at the low end. Okay, so if ES was to run out their sell side and NQ doesn't, you would be expecting that, right? Kind of the crack in the correlation. That's what ICT says. We're expecting bullish prices. We see that SMT form, and that gives you a bias. Um, to you can kind of strengthen your bias. It's not something you need to trade. It's not a PD array. It's not something that, like, if we don't have SMT, we're not going to trade. Because it only happens very rarely, I think, where you would actually use it in your model. Um, so I would say one would be when you're anticipating a counter bias. 
Um, and then two would probably be at specific times, like 10 o'clock or 10.30. So I'll just type that out there. That's probably the best way to look for it. Obviously, it does happen to every single time frame. Um, but it's probably best to use, it definitely is best to use on higher time frames than the one minute. If one pair hits target, is it just a good idea to cut the trade immediately? Um, once again, it kind of depends on your bias. So if I'm trading NQ and ES, I know it's not Forex, but if I'm trading NQ and ES and I'm short, um, you know, during a macro or something and ES runs out their sell side, if I have further targets on NQ, um, I'll be looking to hold. But if I don't have any further targets and ES just ran out their sell side or something like that, I would be looking to close it. So I wouldn't just cut it immediately. I'd probably be hovering over that close button and waiting to see how NQ wants to react. If NQ starts breaking above, you know, PD raise, things like that, then yeah, I would for sure close it. Um, but most times I'm manually closing is because I don't have, right, it's a runner, right? So if you have, take, take profits or if you have partials that happened before and then we're, you know, we're cutting a runner because there's SMT divergence, then um, that's fine. But that's a good question, though. That is something I would pay attention to. I wouldn't cut it immediately. I don't know how Forex works. Like, I don't know how, how the speed of reversals happen or anything like that. But at least on indices, if you see, you know, SMT divergence and it starts to trade back up away from you, it doesn't take, you know, a whole lot to close it out. And it doesn't take a whole lot of it takes more time, I think, for you to kind of understand the reversals happening. Can you explain a little bit this Wednesday from 9.30 forward? It was a little bit tricky. Yeah, sure. Let's take a look at Wednesday. So, obviously, the first thing I want to say is we did have NFP this week. So, um... That'll already bring low probability conditions for the week. But after Wednesday PM session or Wednesday AM session, it becomes very low probability. So we'll look here. So we have Asian high and London high up here. We have some sort of buy side up here. Um, I don't know if we swept that out prior or whatever. But anyways, we trade up. We have pre-market sell side down here. Um, that's the most obvious one that I'm seeing. Obviously, we have some down here too. Liquidity pools. So I'll, I'll be marking out the sell side and the buy side as soon as I see the charts. We see 9.30 come. We don't run out that buy side, so that's a failed 9.30 Judas. Um, you're already expecting off a of failed 9.30 Judas, we want to see potentially a 10 a.m. reversal. Um, but we displace lower aggressively, knocking out um these gaps down here right we have a tiny gap fill up into it so it's very weak we're not really seeing any retracement given um, we trade back lower now one thing you can use for market maker models is if it's a clear market maker model and the first leg displaces through um 50 percent of the daily range and we close below it so if we take low to high here See this first leg after the reversal displaces all the way through past 50% with no retracement. That confirms the market maker sell model. Most times you can use this kind of framework. But I'll be looking at the sell side. Gathering data here between 930 and 950. We don't see any super liquidity, so still looking for a reversal at 10 a.m. Doesn't mean you can't trade the first 10 minutes because we get now if you retrace into this gap right in here, right? Tap into it. I'm sure this may be a two or three minute gap. You're expecting sell side, excuse me. Expecting sell side. Um, we trace into here, simple power of three, right? Retrace, displace, and then we reverse. So you can use that as your entry short if you're aggressive um, into the sell side. Now I told you previously, right? We don't have a sweep of liquidity here. If we ran that out, that'd be that'd be nice, but we don't see it. We don't have super liquidity here, 940. So we're expecting reversal at 10, right? And we also have consolidation between 945 and 10 a.m. 
So if you see this, if you see consolidation between 9.45 and 10 a.m., okay, where it's not a clear displacement range, we're not seeing a lot of movement, most times if you can frame this consolidation with you know, the previous data I gave you, you'll see a Judas and reverse at 10 a.m. Now, I don't know if this reverse will bring you all the way up to the high, which I believe this is what ICT was targeting because both me and ICT took the same trade in this one, and I think he was targeting this high up here, which you can see I do have the buy side annotated. Because a lot of times when you reverse, you have a failed Judas, you want to attack this 930 high. Because think about all the liquidity I was building up. Everyone who's shorting in here, their stop would be above this high. You don't see that heat brought until probably, hopefully, yeah. Eventually we see it, but anyways, reversal at 10 a.m. And then execution there. Oh, we can, we can look at Tuesday too, that's fine. Tuesday was definitely difficult. Um, oh, Tuesday we had 10 a.m. news. So that would be your first indication. We want to avoid that opening range. So whenever you have 10 a.m. news, you typically want to wait till 10.30. At least for me, I'm going to be waiting for 10.30 to trade. But 10 a.m. news, we displace, we have SMT at the lows. Um, displace, we got 10 a.m. news up here. Nothing really in the macro. I'd be looking to trade. 10.30 comes. Um, now this is definitely a hard one, yeah, I would say. I would, we don't really see any retracement entry in here. see this tiny gap I guess you could use that at 1041 space 10 probably 20 points yeah so this would maybe be the only thing I'd be looking at we have a short-term internal range breaker low high lower low we have a breaker in here and we have a gap right in here This would maybe be your only kind of setup I've been looking at. Scalping 20, because I don't know how far we're going to extend. But yeah, I agree. Definitely difficult. There's nothing in the 950 macro. There's nothing super clean in this 1030 macro. There's nothing in here either. Right? We don't see any. Look at 1050 to 1110. We're just in consolidation. So I would say nothing in here that's high probability. Um, yeah, never mind. I was going to say it's probably low probability before that, but we're fine. So that trade, nothing else. Um, rough price action in here. No macro entry at 11.50. This is a kind of a low probability one, though. And nothing for the rest of the day. Did you trade that Tuesday? I don't think I did. Let's take a look. Yeah, this is execution labels taken on stream. At least I didn't take anything on stream from the Tuesday. The execution labels already on. So I obviously did not like the price action in here. Um, I can actually take a look at future trades. Let's see. Tuesday is what? Um, the 5th? Oh, I actually did take that trade. I don't know why it's not displaying here. But this is the only trade I took. I'll send a screenshot. Here, Alex. I'll tell you, I'll send you there. I must have reset the paper trading account. Every single time I log in, it resets for whatever reason. Like, see, it, it's, look, look, if I tap on this, it resets the account. I don't know why. It's kind of annoying. But yeah, if you take a look at that screenshot, I think I just entered off the same exact one I just mentioned. We have the breaker. Um, and then we have that gap with the order block. I entered there, targeting. It looks like 20 points or that internal range high, this high right here. It was definitely a rough day, though. So yeah, don't don't think that we're gonna get higher probability days every single time.
Um, let me cover the stop loss and then I'll get to your question. Uh, stop loss would be, I would assume, probably this will swing low. Okay, so for entering on this gap, like I showed in the picture. Now, the reason we would be placing a stop loss here is we have the breaker as framework, so we shouldn't be trading below the breaker. We have this inversion gap right here we're trading above. Right? It's kind of a lot of annotations, I apologize. Inversion, we traded above. We have this order block here and the gap. So, using all of that, that's th more than three PD rays, that's four PD rays. We're tapping into it. You don't want to see that low taken for sure. You could either, you could really trade it, trail it to here if you're really aggressive. Um, but I think right here is fine. So, a quick list of low probability days apart from CPI, FOMC, and NFP. Um, let me actually, I think I may have a Q&A post. I can just send you a screenshot. Okay, so this is kind of a short text box. It's probably, I don't know what's in it. So AM session after bank holidays. That's very rare. It's only like, what, like seven times in a year. So after bank holidays, you want to avoid NFP, Wednesday PM, Thursday, Friday AM. Oh, this needs to be before 9.30. Um, large overnight move. That's That's a big one. Um, if we see a large overnight move between the close of Friday and then um, 9.30, so I would say it's not really like, it, it's kind of a general framework, right? So I would say maybe 120 points on NQ and more than 35 points on ES would be kind of like that, not really line in the sand, but what I'd be looking for as a large overnight move. Anything bigger than that, definitely large. Um, so the first, the first 30 minutes after large overnight move, you want to be avoiding that. I'd be waiting for after 10 a.m. or potentially kind of a 10 a.m. framework, either reversal or retracement at 10 a.m. to frame a trade. Um, if you can frame both sides, long and short. So if we don't have a clear daily bias, that doesn't mean you can't trade. Um, but if you have, like if on the 50 minute chart, if we're stuck, um, typically between 50% of a daily range. So like here, um, see how we have this daily range low and the daily range high. If we open at 9.30 and we're right at 50% of where the current daily range is, now this applies to any time frame, but I'm going to use 15 minute. If we see something like this, we're trading right around here, say that's the 9.30 open, that would also be low probability, okay? Because you can frame both sides. There's no clear draw on liquidity. And we're expecting consolidation at 50% of a dealing range. So that would also be another example. SMT divergence. So if we open up a 930 and all three of the indices are doing something random, like if ES is climbing, NQ is dumping off, and YM is just twiddling its thumbs in the corner, that would be very low probability. I would be waiting for after 10 a.m., um, especially if DXY is not inverse the indices. So if you see ES and NQ climbing, you want to see DXY normally drop off, right? But if an ES and NQ are both climbing and DXY is also climbing, I would not be touching that at all. That's very, very low probability. Um, if DXY is not inverse, that's a telltale sign that we're not going to be trading anytime in there until it wants to flip. Um, now, there's other tools you can use with DXY not being inverse, but I don't want to confuse <clears throat> too many people. Um, you can use like like pent up pressure idea where if we're not reversing on the indices if, if dxy is climbing and we see indices kind of chopping around here not willing to go weaker like willing to go lower like we should see say we're just kind of bouncing a little bit lower but we're not seeing this clear move like this inverse dxy then when dxy wants to flip like this you'll see typically a huge expansion up on nq so you can use that framework as well Pair that with low probability and you get high probability right after it. Um, Asian range high or low swept by the London Open. So if you have search and destroy conditions as well, that's also low probability. So if you see Asian range high and low swept within like the first 
hour or two of London. And then you see London session high and low already swept out before 930 open. Um, seek and destroy conditions. That's low probability. So those are just kind of off the top of the head. I'm sure there's more. Um, 10 a.m. news as well. If you're looking at the night trade 950 macro, 10 a.m. news, low probability. Um, Mondays, typically low probability. All right, got to head out. Great stream. I appreciate you pulling up. See you on Monday, most likely. So yeah, if we have no more questions, I think we'll probably wrap it up there. If you have anything last minute, we can post it and we'll take a look at that. <clears throat> um, otherwise, yeah, if you want, scroll up, download the PDF if you haven't already. I'll probably delete it after, after today. Um, so if you want to grab that now, just grab it. Or just shoot me a DM and I'll be more than happy to share it with you. Um, I think that's it, right? So if you guys are in Tier 2, I'll see you guys on Monday, Lord willing. Um, otherwise, expect another backtesting stream on on Saturday, next Saturday. Um, so if I don't see you then, have a great rest of your weekend. Um, stay safe. Good luck, good trading on Monday. And peace. Yeah, appreciate you guys joining.